Hey everybody, it's Jackie, and today we are going abstract. We're going to talk about abstract art. We'll see some examples of abstract art, and then we'll talk about strategies you can employ for making your own abstract painting. Making abstract art starts with the essential question, what is abstract art? You might not be surprised to hear me say that people will answer this very big question in lots of different ways. Let's back up a moment and look at the definition of the word abstract. Even the definition points to confusion. One of the meanings of this word is literally something that is hard to define. The word abstract comes from the Latin word abstractus, meaning to pull from something. Keep this idea in mind as we look at the two major distinctions within abstract art. Yes, that's right, there are two major camps within the world of abstract art. Often people are thinking about non-objective art, art that comes directly from the artist's imagination when they are thinking about abstract art. But there's another approach to abstraction that is equally valid. When you distill the essence of a form that exists in nature, you are also making an abstract work. If you're still confused, don't worry. We are going to look at this idea with more detail in a minute. For now, let's see some examples of non-objective art. Squares, triangles, circles, it's hard to make out any forms inside this composition that are not geometric. This painting by the Russian artist Malevich comes from an intense period of artistic experimentation. experimentation. With the 1917 revolution in Russia in the backdrop, Malevich founded a new type of art that he called suprematism in 1915. He stopped using representational forms, replacing nameable objects or things with severely reduced geometric shapes. This work is not rooted in observable reality, and that's what makes it non-objective. In contrast with the sharp lines of Malevich's paintings, Vasily Kandinsky, who was coincidentally also Russian by birth, turned to music for inspiration. Kandinsky is often credited with creating the first truly abstract painting, an idea that has been debated by art historians, though he did coin the expression non-objective painting in 1915. This painting, with its rather simple title, number 18, was made by the iconic American artist Jackson Pollock. Pollock broke free from the standard use of implements at this time. He abandoned direct contact with the painting surface. He worked above the picture plane, dripping and pouring enamel paints onto canvases and papers that were later stretched or adhered to other surfaces. Now that we've seen several examples of non-objective paintings, let's circle back to the second form of abstraction, which pulls imagery out of the world. In 1914, Pablo Picasso created Bull, a suite of 11 lithographs. The first image in this series is a rather straightforward depiction of the animal, but as the series progresses, the creature becomes increasingly bare. The image of a bull ends in a spare line drawing that represents the essence of the bull to Picasso. If you attempted the same feat, you might arrive at a completely different conclusion. And that is what is so fascinating about abstract art. There's no right or wrong way to approach this highly subjective way of making art. But don't be fooled. Making abstract art is hard. How can you take the world as you see it and convey it in a way that is interesting? This takes effort, good craftsmanship, and perhaps some strategy. For this assignment, I would like you to work with the compositions from your still life painting. We are going to look at three key words as potential ways to approach abstraction. Number one is reduction. In this painting by the American artist Georgia O'Keeffe, you can see that she was working with the flower, yet the painting she made does not appear as realistic as a photograph of the subject might be. The texture of the petals have become smooth, the details are reduced in this version of the flower. Next is amplification. Think of this strategy as the opposite of reduction. Using this keyword, I'd like you to try to increase, heighten, or exaggerate the visual information you can observe. In this cubist painting by Georges Braque, the artist has fragmented the objects, a glass, 
and a pair on a table, into a series of geometric facets and planes. Treating the imagery in this way imitates the nature of seeing. We don't just stare at a still life, rather our eyes are busy scanning it from all vantage points. Finally, layering is the last pathway to abstraction that I'd like you to consider. Giacomo Balla was one of the founding members of an Italian art movement called Futurism. He was obsessed with movement and speed, as you can see from this painting. The title tells you that this painting follows the flight of swifts. When you look closely, you will see the image of a bird repeated throughout the composition. The black wings of the bird track its trajectory, making the bird's body seem active, not static. Following this way of thinking, can you find visual elements that can become activated or more dynamic within your composition? It may take you some time to come up with a good sketch to communicate such complex ideas. That's where sketching comes in. You should make several quick compositional sketches to get your ideas on paper. Then choose one to develop into a more developed plan. When you've done this, you are ready to translate your sketch into paint.